of you would like to become a journalist? Print, electronics, uh, web based or uh, TV. Essentially, one thing that will be common is that, you know, the newsroom, migrating from classroom to newsroom is the most difficult one. As a team leader, I face this dilemma. Whether should I take these youngsters into the newsroom? Because as a team leader, I would be extremely comfortable with people who have two to three years of experience. They can be molded and they can be of use to the organization straight away. But then the problem is that you know when you take experienced people into a newsroom, that culture continues. The culture of a newsroom which you imbibe in other organizations will continue in this in, in the new organization also. There won't be any, how do you put it, that breath of fresh air. Youngsters come with a lot of ideas lot of energy perhaps in uh, perhaps you know they will be coming up with a very good narrative techniques also writing speaking or with ideas so world over this is the reason why freshers are taken freshers are taken but i must tell you that the salary component of a fresher is too meager we do know that thing but then, if you look at the economics of running a newspaper or a news organization, if you strictly look at the economics of running a newspaper or a news organization, it would be wise to have experienced people and pay more. Because you take a fresher, you will have to train, you will have to mold them, you will have to uh, chisel that raw candidate into a fine writer or a fine speaker who doesn't falter in front of a camera or a, or a journalist who can take to the web instantly and uh, start doing that web journalism. Organization invests a lot of time in such training activities. So when we calculate the time invested in training a raw candidate, a fresher, in trying to make him into a full fledged journalist, the organizational expenses will be the same. Perhaps you may be wondering why freshers are paid so low. This is the reason. For me, if I'm not a, I'm just looking at a, the economics of running a newspaper. The kind of a time we spend, the kind of a indulgence we have towards the freshers in trying to tell them whenever they make the mistake that it is not like this, you should do it, go back and do it. That means we are spending that organizational time which is very, very expensive. That is the reason why fresher salaries are low. Never get discouraged with that thing. Number two. My idea of coming and what's a, talking to you is that by the time you and I leave this hall, there must be some takeaway, something which you can take away in your mind so that which would be of some use to you two years down the lane. By the time you complete your course, you join a newsroom or you become a researcher or you become a TV journalist or you join the advertisement field or you join the public relations field, whatever. There must be some takeaway. Otherwise, there is no purpose. There is no utility of... Uh, talking. There is no utility of communication. The utility value is only I look at it. So that makes me to talk very frankly. Don't expect that to know I will give you a hunky-dory picture of anything. You can ask anything. I will be free. I will be, I'll be very dead honest with you. So when you get recruited, classroom to newsroom, the migration, what you would find difficult is what they don't teach you here. We expect you to practice there. Technically, they will try to teach you everything here. I'm not finding fault with Steve or uh, Usman University or uh, EFLU or uh, Central University or any other course. 
I have taken classes in uh, Asian College of Journalism in Chennai, supposedly the best. But then, when I recruited or when I handled the students who are coming out of the so-called best college of journalism in India, ACJ, I found it very difficult to tackle them. Tackling in the sense, I am not trying to say that, you know, they should agree with the leader and do it. When we discuss a story idea, it doesn't mean that, you know, they have to go by what I say. But there should be some fruitful discussion and the way you uh, adhere to the norms of the uh, writing and the newsroom decisions are taken in a completely in different or alien environment which you are not exposed to at all. That is a big problem we face, not from just from ACJ, but also from other journalism institutions also. I'll tell you why it happens. And this becomes the biggest obstacle in the migration from classroom to newsroom. What will happen is, in the classroom, your lecturers would ask you to choose your own topics. You have these uh, study papers, you have these uh, uh, tasks given to you, produce this, write that, you write for Usmania Courier, you make this 10-minute uh, movie or whatever, whatever. The topics are carefully chosen by you guys. And you take your own sweet time, 15 days, 20 days. When you come up, there are teachers who are willing to polish that product. If you have short, uh, whatever you call, TVC or uh, message-oriented film or whatever, you, must, you guys must be doing that, right? When you do that, all the, the collective wisdom of the teachers here is ready to be exploited by you guys. They will help you with editing, they will help you with writing, they will help you with the camera angles, they will teach you how to shoot, they will teach you how to write, what is a news feature, what is a feature, what is news. They will try to help you with words also if need be, in a leisure atmosphere. Cut from that, move into a newsroom, you don't have that luxury of time. A situation that develops, a newsroom would instantly respond to that particular situation and start filing reports, whether it is print or uh, TV journalism or uh, web journalism. 8 o'clock on November 8th, Modi has announced that demonetization of uh, uh, the high end currency, 500,000 notes. Though my edition is not yet in the market, we already started thinking about what could be the impact, how should you write, who should write what, so on and so forth. So instantly, within 10 minutes of the speech of the Prime Minister, we have delegated, uh, what say, duties to every reporter, saying that, okay, you look at this aspect, what will happen there, what will happen here, go out onto the field and then get back, sort of a thing. And all these things have to be done instantly. That is where the biggest difference between classroom assignment and the newsroom assignment is. For example, yesterday, by 3.30 we came to know about an old guy collapsing in, in one of the banks uh, in Maratpalli. The portal was somewhere in Vanastalipuram. We have moved him, chased him from Vanastalipuram to Maratpalli. Photographer was somewhere else. We had to rush in there. Of course, we didn't get the photograph because by the time our photographer reached there, you know, the body has already been moved out. But then the effort continues. So such is the urgency you must adopt. When a deadline for your assignment is given, please take it very, very seriously. Even if you do a haphazard job, you must come up with something. If you train yourself to respond to such emerging situations in the classroom, it would be easier for you to work in any organization later, be it uh, advertisement field, or be it public relations, be it newspaper, whatever field you choose. For example, 
Paytm came up with an advertisement about demonetization. How many of you have seen that drama bandkaro jingle? This is one of the best examples of how creativity is sought to be tapped for instant results. There is a lot of discussion going on in the society whether it is uh, the, on the effects or ill effects of the demonetization move. So the TV jingle shows, I wish I could have shown you this thing. My laptop doesn't work, but anyway. Paytm, you must be aware of this Paytm, right? Uh, the app through which you pay this money and everything. So there is this uh, household, obviously wealthy household, the woman of the house talking in front of the camera, saying that, okay, even if they have demonetized, it doesn't matter. Look at the people, way people are suffering. Okay, I am not worried about whether I get my salary or not. I had to pay this servant maid. Then the camera pans on to that servant maid who is working in the background, focuses on the bag and the servant maid. And that lady takes out a, a mobile, mobile phone a smartphone and then shows it like this and says drama band karo, paytm karo. The message is that whoever is opposing the demonetization are resorting to this sort of a drama. The society did not like it. There were lots and lots of tweets saying that you know you are taking advantage and you are insulting the people's feelings. So we are uninstalling this Paytm uh, uh, app itself. That these were the messages that the war was going on Twitter. So Paytm got worried. They have immediately changed that advertisement within, let us say, about 12 hours. The, they have changed the dialogue. Drama ban karo, Paytm karo. To nothing to worry, Paytm karo or something like that. Within 12 hours, they changed the complete creative of uh, that advertisement and uh, released it with an apology. And Vijay Shekhar or Vijay Chandra, the CEO of that Paytm, uh, issued a public apology saying that uh, they did not mean to insult anyone sort of a thing. Such is the way the talent pool, whether it is a newsroom, in a newspaper or let us say a creative team in an advertisement department or if you join a public relations department, such is the quickness with which reactions take place. If you are not quick, you lose the game. If you have to be quick, you have to be glued into the developments 24-7 and be ready to respond. That is the difference between classroom and newsroom. Or perhaps we will say your working room. Newsroom is confined only to journalism. If you join a, a PR organization or advertisement, this thing, I, I deliberately took this Paytm example because it tells us so many things. How society is responding to a developing situation how society is analyzing and expressing itself through social media, not the traditional media. Nobody wrote letters to the editor sort of a thing. It was all through tweets. Just go to, how many of you are on Twitter? Raise your hands. Very few. Facebook? Almost everyone. My advice would be to move on to the Twitter platform. Twitter gives you very serious stuff. Of course, you can manage both. When you pass out of these institutions with a degree of uh, Masters in Communication and Journalism, the kind of a knowledge that you acquire here, the kind of a knowledge transfer that takes place in journalism classrooms is phenomenal. But your success would depend on utilizing it properly. For example, if they are teaching you the communication theories here, perhaps you would be a communication expert for UNICEF tomorrow. Perhaps you know you would be handling uh, what's a department where you know you have to 
send message across to people. For example, take the demonetization uh, example itself. If you were in the DAVP of uh, central government, Directorate of Audiovisual Publicity, if you are asked to come up with creatives in uh, uh, for print advertisements and uh, TV advertisements or uh, social media uh, plan, what would you come up with? You are supposed to mold the public opinion in favor of the demonetization drive. You can't take uh, two weeks to do that thing. The sense of urgency is there if you take this uh, demonetization example. So this is where, or if you are in a newspaper, you are expected to write an article immediately, you are expected to go and talk to people and write back immediately. If you are in a TV channel, you have to go and talk to people and then come up. Not just yakking incessantly in front of a TV camera, but getting some meaningful information which the reader can retain that information for discussions, for a student can listen to that uh, uh, TV uh, newscast and uh, retain that information so that he can use that information in an interview or when he writes an analytical piece or when he attempts to understand something. Let me also be very clear. You can be one among the journalists, one among the workforces, not make any dent, doing the same old repetitive stuff which nobody would recall the next day, or you could be the one who could come up quickly. If you are in advertisement field, you could come up quickly in the repairing the situation, a creative or a good uh, creative work that can work in favor of the government, or a good analytical piece for a newspaper, or a good analytical uh, five-minute video for a TV channel, or any of the organizations who are affected or benefited with uh, what say, this demonetization drive, if you are handling a PR firm, if you are a PR mem team, a member of the PR team, you could come up with quick solutions on monetizing on the demonetization drive and accruing benefit to the organization, whichever field you choose. I don't think that no, all of you will end up in uh, print newspapers. You may go for any of the fields. That is why we will come back to the same. Classroom, the utility of the knowledge that is sought, sought to be transferred in the classroom, you will not feel it now. But when you join other organization, then you will recall. So it is better to be, if you are clever, you will try to use it to the maximum advantage now. Because this is not a, you are not in a course where uh, you learn and uh, you, you learn so many things and you just mechanically spew out all the answers in A, B, C, D and this thing and get selected for anything. If you are taking up any job associated with the course you are learning, you are supposed to be a quick learner. You are supposed to be a quick implementer. So, from classroom to newsroom or whichever room, this is the biggest, what say, problem you are going to face if you are not following this thing. Number two, when you move into a job and you not repeatedly say that you no know, newspaper, TV or anything, let us say, blandly say that a job, the culture you will be exposed to will shock you. Till now, you did your undergrad, you, you, you came up in a different culture, from school to class to 12th standard, you know, you have a different culture. Any change in the culture, you won't, you would resent it. Look at children, you know, when you change schools, you know, they, they are uh, apprehensive of moving into a new school because they won't know what sort of a culture it would be there. All of a sudden, if you are taken away from your parents and put it in somebody else's house, you would be worried what sort of a culture it would be there. Culture in general sense, I'm not talking about culture by definition, but culture is the ethos, the, the processes that are, are there in a particular house or an organization would be different. Here, classroom culture is something different. Teachers, by and large, are most indulgent, they are most, towards a uh, 
they try to help they may sometimes uh, put up a face of what's a anger they may shout at you but that is uh, with the purpose to make you understand or uh, fall in line if you are going astray or something like that but when you go to an organization as an employee you must remember one thing boss is not your uncle no way your leader may be friendly with you but when it comes to execution of the task he will be very very harsh so that is going to be the first culture shock you will be exposed to srinivas reddy may be very politely talking here not never raising voice here but srinivas reddy in a newsroom could be different not as different as uh, dr jekyll and mr hyde have you has everyone anyone read dr jekyll and mr hyde jekyll and mr hyde are the bipolar personalities you know during the day time somebody dr jekyll and uh, by night he becomes a most grotesque person so organizations mean business not in business in the loose term of earning money business is that you know what you are supposed to do you are supposed to do that's it that is why when we look at this campus recruitments happening in engineering colleges especially most of them boast that you know 60% placements this and that thing how many students get retained in the place in the jobs they are recruited in the campus recruitments if you look out if you take an analysis you will be surprised there will be more than 50% 60% drops within 6 months because all of a sudden this campus uh, guy recruited on the campus is expected to work from 8 pm to 8 am culture shock here you reach home by 6 o'clock the mom is ready with hot food and everything and your dad would shout at you if you are not sleeping by 10 o'clock you are forced to sleep by at least by 11 and you get up fresh in the morning juxtapose this situation to an organization which works around the clock if you are put on a shift you are expected to work your health gets affected your payment would be less then there will be a time when you will be comparing at a boss i am getting just 15000 rupees for this 8 hours i am working at the most ungodly this hours that is where the uh disillusion begins and you drop out of this thing when you drop out of this thing you do not know what to do the crisis begins that is why choose a job very carefully but trying to understand what it what the organization expects you expects from you if you are clear about this thing the migration between classroom and the organization becomes easier am i making sense i don't know <laughs> really think so what i am telling you would it be of any use to you be frank with me you can just say, don't bullshit me like this uh, we, we can we can call it a day and have a cup of tea and uh... why i am narrating this in detail with you is that i have handled freshers for the last let us say 15 years to be precise 16 years the kind of a shock they would undergo when they are expected to do this it sometimes i feel what's a pity for them sometimes i i was harsh with them i try to understand i try to counsel them but but then sometimes i do feel pity because within uh, within 2 months or 3 months uh, youngsters start leaving and after leaving i keep track of what say people who have left my teams 
not many have uh, become successful some have made it big people who have uh, gone for higher studies they have done well but people who have switched jobs are not doing well ultimately just two months ago one of the guys who quit when i was the uh, situator of the hindu in hyderabad the guy came with uh, very lofty ideals of uh, journalism yes you must have that fire in your belly but please remember that on joining a news organization next day you don't expect to write an edit page article about uh, west asian crisis no way i would appreciate somebody attempting a topic like that but the newsroom processes or the organizational processes are certainly different for example if you are into java coding how many of you are into coding anyone computer coding javascript no if you are into computer science you will be given a package let us say web designing if the screen has to look like this on taking the mouse here on hover this drop menu should come that will be the task given to you it's a very simple thing actually but if you say that i will take care of the entire page then no one will allow you similarly if i recruit you as a reporter if you come to me and says that no i want to write about education system in india i may not allow you to do it i would rather ask you to take care of some small press releases and this and that thing because i need to be convinced about your capabilities to understand the development dispassionately and come up with a an argument an analysis on sound lines because what you write goes in my paper for which i am responsible the entire credibility of the organization will be thrown behind you when we publish something when you write that is the reason why this guy thought he could do something we are wanted him to do something there was a, apparently the contradiction he quit and he thought uh, he would fit into a research organization i did advise him to not to take up that research organization because by interacting with a person for about a month or so you will understand the capabilities research orientation is something different collating information from different sources of uh, different sources keeping it together then sorting out that information analyzing that information coming up with some sort of an analysis out of that is a huge task the people develop interest in that but straight away he joined a research organization he couldn't fit in there three months later he joined a uh, vernacular daily worked there for two months two years and then ultimately last i saw him was he applied for a job with me again in this new newspaper which i started so i was curious so i said brother i advise you not to move into that thing i advise you to learn basics of writing what you have learnt in the classroom is different what i want is different you are not willing so some 6 years later that guy tells me yes sir i did a mistake i felt really sad not sad uh, because uh, that was his decision isn't it so if you come to me tomorrow with the set idea of that you know i will only do this thing you will go that gentleman's way perhaps you know we might tolerate you for about a couple of months and then you quit that is why my advice for you would be two years you are going to acquire knowledge here do that in a sound fashion when you go out and join an organization 
be clear of what you are expected to do and what you will be able to do if i am expected to do like these things my capabilities are this what is the shortfall what is the expectation and what is the reality if this is the gap can i reduce that gap if you are able to reduce that gap only you will be successful if that gap is increasing you will be very unsuccessful you will become a routine employee of that organization but not the leader because whenever you join it uh, a role there must be some progression two years three years i need to be at this level sort of a thing if not designation wise at least your pay must increase so essentially these are the practical things which i thought are not embedded anywhere in the college syllabuses which you which you will be exposed to in the next uh, two years when i was in this classroom the first job i got was in uh, evening daily you will be surprised if i tell you what salary i got at that time 317 rupees 50 paise 1750 was a reimbursement for my bus pass used to do it here 300 was a salary as a reporter i'll tell you the kind of uh, uh, culture shock which I, uh, i had undergone through we had a news editor gentleman was well intentioned but he was very very angry always you don't know why he was shouting even if you pass in front of him you know he would shout but here we were the lordla betis of the department here whichever lecturer in the sense we used to be very naughty in this classroom not that you know uh, i see all you guys are very very well behaved and this thing we were all let us say rascals of the class here <clears throat> but we try to learn here we had very stellar what say personalities as our teachers here bashiruddin was uh, had just moved out as ambassador of qatar at that time usha vyasul reddy was here plv was here akileshwari nargis and lot of uh, people from outside used to come and talk to us here we tried to learn and we excelled in our all the examinations here excelling is not 80% 90% only just 58 face 59% that was the biggest thing but when we moved to the when i moved to the news room you the rules of the game were different as i told you here you know we could walk into class any time lecture has begun but you can walk in any time there you know first discipline was the deadline discipline which i faced there to my luck the moment i joined there were communal rights in hyderabad and uh, we had to walk i used to walk for at least 40 to 15 kilometers a day right from usmania hospital to siddham shetty printers in bakaram uh, in those days you know there were no not many phones were also available but we had to walk and then uh, what say file the reports the news editor won't understand that you know you walk for 10 to 12 kilometers you come and slump in a chair and start typing and he would expect the copy immediately because that was an evening edition he would shout sometimes we used to break into tears also because there was no one to appreciate that you know you have gone there you have been exposed to some brutal violence the brutality of the violence takes a toll on you you are exposed you are psychologically shattered and there is no comforting words when you walk 10 kilometers and come to office but you know you are yelled at that was the biggest shock <clears throat> when we joined what's a news today news today was another english daily of enodu group technically i was working for both enodu and news time because i was working in a agency called news today the organization culture was shocking again they would note down even in minutes 6 o'clock you are supposed to report you have reported 601 it would be recorded there and uh, of course there was some liberal attitude because that was a very professionally organized newsroom liberal attitude in the sense we could smoke and then type in the office that was the days those were the days when we thought that you know you must have a cigarette in your hand when you type that is only journalism sort of a thing 
<clears throat> After that five years, when I moved to uh, Indian Express, Indian Express at that time, there was another culture shock because I was moving from a highly discipline oriented newsroom of news today in Ardu to Indian Express which was quite liberal. Not at the work time, deadlines were always constant, but the way people interacted with others. For example, in an Inadu building, we were not supposed to laugh loudly. Here in Express, people used to argue or what say, shout at each other and smoke, what say, tossing of cigarettes here and there and all these things were happening here. Five years down the line, when I moved to the Hindu, there was another culture shock. Express, we never were cared for the working hours. Almost uh, 14 to 16 hours we were working. When I moved to the Hindu, another cultural shock. At 7 o'clock, I was asked to go home. From the time when we used to reach office around 1.30 or 2 o'clock, only after the edition went to bed, we used to come home. And there was this chief of bureau who was asking me to leave by 7 o'clock. I didn't know what to do, actually. It was disorienting. So I said, I cannot go home at this time. So I said, why? What is wrong with you? You must go and spend time with your wife, children, or parents, or something like that. This was the humanitarian attitude of that towards the chief of bureau, who is no more, a great person. But then, it was too much of a easy going in the Hindu at the time, which was a culture shock. Was never used to ask us why we missed any particular development because Hindu's culture was not there. You had to verify and then only write. Of course, over a period of time that has changed. But whichever newsroom I worked, we never uh, gave second preference to work. These are all the cultures I am talking about. Work will be remain the same whether it is Citizens Evening or the Hindu or Telangana today, work remains the same, but cultures differ. So your ability to adopt to the culture is the most crucial one. In news organizations, you don't get to choose what you cover, what you specialize. Unless your knowledge is very good and your team leader understands that your knowledge about a particular field, whether it is environment, education, crime, politics, or whatever field. If you can convince your boss that you know your knowledge about that particular field is of use in the job, then you will get to cover what you like. Otherwise, every news organization has got this uh, beat system. Somebody is given beat of covering civic issues, the municipalities, education, power, industry, agriculture. For example, the boss would also be, uh, let us say, considering. If you put a completely city-bred person into agricultural beat, he won't even understand what agriculture is. So, the team leader would try to assess your uh, depth of knowledge in a particular field and then put it, number one. Number two, why I chose crime? Not out of love for anything or anything, but number one, junior most persons are given this job because it is very, very tedious. Number two, it is most challenging. I did not look at senior, junior uh, angle. I looked at the possibility of gaining experience in trying to ferret out information from people who are not willing to share information. Law enforcement agencies, by dictum, they don't give you information. Information is sought to be given only when it is favorable to them. 
something goes wrong nobody will give you information and your boss will be asking you okay how many killed what happened this and that thing so it was more of a challenging in nature which attracted me i guess in retrospect i would say as you know information business is uh, slightly interesting people would want to share information if it is convenient to them take example of demonetization drive congress aam aadmi party tmc everybody would want their arguments to be written about and covered in tv these things and they would willingly call the reporters and discuss but when it doesn't suit their interest they just keep quiet so how do you tackle them at least in such beats political beat or any other beat the sources of information would be willing to share information across the world if you report crime the sources of information would give you as little information as possible even in the united states look at the uh, in- instances that happen there somebody goes and shoots somebody somebody walks into a school and goes on killing anyone they would say that the suspect armed with two automatic weapons was seen suspect there are casualty is feared that's all official statement would come nothing else would come what would you do with the such information you will have to move you will have to talk to the eye witnesses you will have to ferret out information put two and two together and arrive at four not five so that will be the most challenging one perhaps that drew me into crime and then into maoist maoism and then into this uh, insurgency and counter insurgency uh, this thing is trying to understand it's very fascinating how uh, how people behave in such a criminal way perhaps i developed some interest in that uh, therefore i continued for that for a long time mindset is perhaps you should go with an open mind open mind where you have to tell repeatedly remind yourself that you know you will be learning more in an organization not just practice what you have learned here and do it there but you think that it is an extension of learning process that will happen in any organization you join that should be your mindset for example if you join a newspaper or a tv channel or a public relations company don't think that i have mastered everything i got 90% in mcj therefore i am the uh, expert no way you have still have to learn so that learning mode you will have to continue for a long time because the cognitive surplus that is there outside in the society is far more unfathomable than what you have been exposed to here if i claim that i am an expert on maoist this thing you know i will i will not be able to speak for 2 minutes about the protracted arms struggle in front of an illiterate naxalite who had been fighting with security forces for the last 20 years he is an illiterate technically but i could not argue with him for 2 minutes the so called knowledge expertise and everything when i went into bastar i could not argue with him because he was coming up with his own argument so you have to be on a constant learning mode i think that is the only suggestion i can give it to you that mindset is you have to be on the learning mode you are good in your language be happy with it but try to learn something about javascript you know javascript you get into learning language or if not that thing you know you get into excel you learn something about php you learn something about html5 there is no end to learning you need not go to classrooms again best way is when you join an organization you can learn a lot of things if you use your time productively 
if you just sit in front of a computer and start Facebook, uh, what's a status message, I'm feeling bored, I'm hungry. Of course, you have to do that also. I don't expect you to completely uh, become a machine sort of a thing. You have fun. So, learning mode is a mindset. Okay. I'm sure. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me so patiently. Well, uh, when Mr. Reddy entered my chamber, he said, uh, when he, he thought of actually not coming today. So, the thought of bunking. Okay, bunking. Nevertheless, <laughs> 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 I think. Uh, he made it and I am glad that he spent almost two hours with us. Okay, taking us through the entire process like telling us what is expected of us when we join the industry. One. Right? Telling us in very explicit terms how we prepare ourselves for the digital platforms. How it has to be a continuous learning process. Okay. I know he is a voracious reader, when we interact he tells us a lot of things. We can actually invite him for another session if you want to really interact with him on Maoism and counter intelligence operations. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, Mr. Reddy for sparing such a uh, precious moments with us. I am sure he must have had so many missed calls by now from his office. <laughs> okay. Uh, on behalf of uh, FLU students also, there are some oh. FLU students here, we are about uh, 10 of them, if I am right. Yeah, thank you so much and we look forward to your support in future also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.